If you have your booklet on the Lord Jesus Christ, we have spent two weeks in this booklet and we are going to finish it tonight, but we're going to take our time so you can open your, your uh, booklet of uh, level three, number five to page number seven. And we're going to get there in just a minute, but I referenced earlier 1 John chapter one. So why don't we begin by turning there, 1 John chapter 1, 1 John chapter 1, please remember that the book of 1 John, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and Revelation were written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit by the same man who wrote the Gospel of John. Written by the same man that the Bible says was leaning on Jesus' breast. He was so close to him. He was so close to him that when Jesus said, tonight one of you will betray me, the disciples asked John to ask Jesus, because if anybody could get information out of Jesus, they believed, John could. So this is the man who was, in their opinion and in his own opinion, and never says that Jesus said he was closest to him, but in his own opinion, he was closer to Jesus than the rest of them. And, and by the way, I think it's a healthy thing if it's sincere for a believer to think that he or she knows Jesus better than everybody else does. I mean, I do. <laughs> so, uh, but no, I, I've always, uh, I remember being a teenager and it dawned on me that, you know, maybe somebody else knows the Lord too, you know. And uh, no, uh-uh, I know him better than anybody else my age. And um, I, obviously there's there's some, some arrogance there that needs to be suppressed, but uh, there's also some sweetness there, which caused John to write, I'm the disciple that Jesus loves. And uh, there's something in there that says, you know, hey, I'm close to him. I'm his favorite. And uh, it, it, so in, in some sense, it's a healthy thing. But this is the man who is writing that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. Let's read it. First John chapter 1, verse 1, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. He's talking about Jesus Christ in the flesh. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. He's not saying so that you can have fellowship with me. He's saying so that you and I can both have fellowship with Jesus Christ. And But this is the man who could make the claim that he was closer to Jesus than any other human being. Whether or not it was true, John would not have hesitated to make that claim. And he invites the rest of us to be as close to Jesus as he was. That's an amazing invitation. You know, if um, Thaddeus, the apostle Thaddeus, had written this, you know, I would read it and my cynicism would say, I mean, we don't even know who you are, dude. So, you know, what, what kind of a statement is that? We'll know him as well as you are. You're a nobody. You know what I mean? That's rude. That's unkind. But that would be my flesh's response. But you can't, you can't say nothing to John. John was as close to Jesus as any human being. And he writes under inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to show you how to be as close to Jesus as I am. That means you can be as close to Jesus by faith. In fact, I believe you can be closer to Jesus by faith than you can by sight because sight, there's so much cheating in sight. You can think you know somebody and you don't. You don't make any effort to get to know them further 
because you know what they look like. Or you can hear the sound of their voice. But to get to know Jesus by faith, that takes effort. It, it takes testing to get to know God by faith. And so John is used to the Lord to invite us. And the invitation is there for you. You and I can know Jesus Christ as fully, as closely, as intimately as the Apostle John. Do you believe that? Are you willing to pursue that? We started the service talk, or the prayer meeting by talking about Uh, David as a man of praise. To me, there are so many similarities between David in the Old Testament and John in the New Testament. They both had a deep personal affection for the Lord. There was something that burned in both of their hearts that they just loved him. And I want that so badly. I want that so badly. I have wanted that since I heard the message that I've talked about when I was 16 years old, that I may know him. And I want it just as badly or more today. And I want you to have that desire, to know Jesus. We talk about the dark times we're living in. On any given day, you can wake up and say, uh, nothing really exciting going on today. Oh, yes, there is. There is your fellowship with Jesus Christ. And right away, I have found this to be true. If I check my email before I hit my knees, that will set the tone for the day. If I check the news or a sports score before I go to the cross, that will set the tone for the day. I, I beg you, to, even if it can only be two or three or five minutes to get to the Lord first thing and initiate that sweet fellowship with him. All right, so let's jump into the rest of this Bible study. Verse number seven, how can I know Jesus better? Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, how can I know Jesus better? Number one, by studying the word of God. John, who knew Jesus, as we just read in 1 John chapter 1, when he talked about knowing Jesus, what did he talk about? He talked about the word of life. This is how you get to know Jesus. There's no shortcut around knowing your Bible. And when you hide God's word in your heart and then you bring it up, you've all heard the illustration of what it means to meditate. It's gross, but a, a cow has transitions in his digestive system. So he eats food. He'll, he, can, he can go in a field and eat grass and store it. And then... When he gets hungry, you've all heard of a cow chewing his cud. What he is doing is bringing it up and chewing on it. Now, there's part of that that sounds really gross, but there's another part of that that sounds really cool to me. That, you know, uh, imagine if I could, if, if I get hungry, I can just bring something up, right? And uh, you say, yeah, but it would be nasty. But the cow thinks it's cool. Anyway, but that's where the word meditate comes from to bring up something that you ingested earlier to chew on. And one reason we can't meditate as well as we ought to is because we have not ingested enough of the Scripture. I'm afraid that way too many uh, teachers and preachers talk about Scripture memorization like it's a nice icing on the cake if you can do it. No, it is life and death. It is absolutely essential to a Christian who wants to know the Lord and who wants to walk in newness of life. 
You have got to have something in your heart that you can bring up. And that's why I recommend that you memorize by the chapter. Because if you, I mean, there are, there, there's all kinds of verses you ought to memorize. But if you, you memorize one verse, you meditate on that verse, you're done. Where do you go? Um, you can go to another verse, sure. But the, the thing about the chapter is it just keeps going and going and going. And you can, you, your mind can get lost in, in that. And so uh, it, how do you get to know Jesus better? By studying the word of God. Search the scriptures, Jesus said in John 5, 39. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Now you look at that and you go, he sounds like he's implying that eternal life is not in the scriptures. No, he's talking to the Pharisees. He's talking to the religious Jews, and he is saying, hey, you, you believe that life is in here, right? Well, if you'd study it, you'd find me in there. That's what he's saying. He's not discouraging them from believing that there's life to be found in the Bible. He's saying, you are putting your confidence in the scriptures, and yet you don't believe in me. How's that work? Search the scriptures, because you believe that eternal life is in there. You're right, but I'm in there. Did you notice, as we read 1 John chapter 1, that John called Jesus eternal life in the flesh? Eternal, that was cool. Eternal life in the flesh. And so, studying the word of God. You're in 2 Timothy chapter 2, look at verse number 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman (coughs) that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you think that you are going to run out of things to learn, I assure you, you are not. If you think that you have already mastered the Bible, (laughs) I assure you, you have not. There, I, I, by God's grace, I learn things every single day by reading and studying the Bible and by reading what other people who have studied the Bible over the last centuries, what they have written. And there's always new things to learn and new perspectives. There's no new truth. But there's new perspectives on the truths that have been there forever. How can I know Jesus better? By studying the word of God. I keep, so the, uh, apparently the clock there is interfering with the, uh, the live stream. So we moved it. So you're going to, you've seen me do this already about a dozen times tonight. I look up and over there. And it's going to happen for probably about the next month and a half. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's what's going on there. How can I know Jesus better by studying the word of God? Number two, by participating in the teaching and preaching of God's word. Participating. First of all, by hearing. Romans 10, 17. You can turn to Isaiah chapter 55, and uh, we'll meet there in a minute. But by hearing the word of God. Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. We should put ourselves in a position that we can hear the word of God as much as possible. And you're here tonight. (coughs) You're here tonight, H-E-R-E. But are you hearing tonight, H-E-A-R? Your mind can be someplace completely off in the distance. You can be thinking about something else. You can be daydreaming. Hearing takes work. It's something that happens on purpose. And so participating in the teaching and preaching of God's word, first by hearing and then uh, by receiving Ephesians 50, um, Ephesians, Isaiah 55 verses 10 and 11. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. 
It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. God is counting on us receiving his word. You may not understand it all. You may not comprehend it all, but you should receive it. You should look for something every time you read your Bible. God, show me something. Maybe something you've never seen before. Maybe something God wants you to see in a new light. Show me something. Show me something. When we receive God's word with a humble spirit, our lives will become more fruitful and we will know Jesus better. Letter C, communicating. So this is all under number two. Uh, how, do, how can I know Jesus better? No, number one, by studying the word of God. Number two, by participating in the teaching and preaching of God's word. Hearing, receiving, and letter C, communicating. 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. When you're involved in the communication of God's truths, not only do you get to know those truths better, you get to know Jesus Christ better. Our faith causes us to communicate God's words to others. So how can I know Jesus better? By studying the word of God, by participating in the teaching and preaching of God's word, and then, number three, by serving him. Turn to John chapter 12. By serving him. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments, 1 John chapter 2, verse number 3 says, and then uh, John chapter 12 and verse number 26, and I'm not there yet, so give me a second, <coughs> John chapter 12 and verse number 26. Hmm. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. So by being a servant of Jesus, you will be where Jesus is. Jesus said in Matthew 11, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. What is a yoke? A yoke is something that uh, holds two animals together and then attaches to a plow so that they can plow a field. They are working together to pull the plow. So a yoke is associated with work. And Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. You want to get to know Jesus better? Serve him. Work with him. You know, I don't understand how that causes me to know Jesus, but you may not understand it until you apply it. Go to work for Jesus. Go to work for Jesus. One of the greatest things that I heard about relationships in Bible college was you, didn't, you don't get to know somebody face to face. You get to know somebody best side by side pulling the same load. Man, that stayed with me. And that's the truth. Uh, Amy and I have an unbreakable bond. We are, I, I don't think it's possible for, for, for a husband and wife to be closer. Why is that? Because we, we go out on dates every night? No, we don't. But we do serve together every single day of our lives. Every day of our lives. We are serving the Lord together. Face by face. I love face to face, but we spend most of our time side by side pulling the load together. And that's how you get to know God better. By serving him. We always learn more about someone when we work with him. Many times our strongest relationships are developed with whom we work effectively, with those with whom we work effectively. How else? Last one. Turn to 1 Peter chapter number 1. By enduring difficult times. How do we get to know Jesus better? By studying the word of God. By participating in the teaching and preaching of God's word. By serving him. And then lastly, by enduring difficult times. 1 Peter chapter number 1, and we're going to read verses 6 and 7. 1 Peter 1, 6 and 7.
Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and glory, uh, praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. I don't, you, know, you can turn over a couple pages now to the book of James and that's where we'll end. I don't wish upon myself to suffer like martyrs do. But when I hear about people around the world being persecuted for Jesus Christ, I do know that they are having an opportunity to get close to Christ that I don't have. And in that sense, I envy them. Now, I have plenty of opportunities of my own to get to know Christ. But there is a way that you get to know him by being Jeremiah in the prison, in the pit, or being the Apostle Paul in the prison. There's a way that you get to know him in these times of persecution that nothing else can quite match it. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. When you endure difficult times, you get to know Jesus Christ better. Painful things or temptations, as the wording appears in these previous verses, happen to everyone. As a Christian, we now understand that hard times have a purpose. These events can be recognized as God's tool to build us and help us grow in Christ. When we endure a trial and maintain our faith in the Lord, it will reveal that our faith is genuine. The testing of our faith leads us to a deeper relationship with and greater trust in Jesus. Let's close this out tonight by pointing out this, this simple thought. We don't value knowing Jesus like we should value knowing Jesus. It ought to be the most precious thing in the world to us, but it's not. There are dozens of other things that we put ahead of valuing Knowing Jesus. And there's no way that I can change that just by saying that, not in my heart or in yours. But I beg you to ask the Lord to teach you and lead you to know him better and to value his presence better. I know I've said it a trillion times, give or take. But when we see Jesus... We're going to wish, I, I know it's true that we're going to wish we had done more for him, but more specifically, we're going to wish that we had gotten to know him better in this life. We're going to wish that we had turned off the TV or the, the internet or put our phone away to focus on him more, to talk to him more, to be silent before him more. And I'm not saying that to guilt you. I'm saying that to help all of us to focus on knowing Jesus Christ. Let's stand together tonight.